You're listening to the Vic 757 Podcast featuring Dwight and Michael Vic talking all things tech. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Vic 757 Show, talking all things tech. I'm your host once again, former Virginia Tech offensive lineman and captain Dwight Vic, and legendary, iconic quarterback, all-conference, Heisman finalist Michael Vic in the building. Vic, my little cuz. What's going on with you, man? Because you need no introduction, man. You know that. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me introduce you next time. <laughs> Introduce you, cuz. Do your favor. Let me pay it forward. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I, I, we'll do that next time. I'll let you do it, man. Thank you know, you. I'll let you do it, man. This going to be real simple. Uh, Yo, introducing man. to y'all my big cuz. I love him to death. I played at God and Tech, number 57. He represented. Yeah. Hell, yeah. Jim Drunk and Miller down. <laughs> Jim, Al. Uh, yeah. You know what, man? You know, Nick. real quick. Nick, Nick, oh yeah, yep. Nick. Shout out to Nick yeah. Sorensen. Nick Sorensen, for, sure. for those that don't know, Nick Sorensen yep. was our merch quarterback. You know what I'm saying? He was the jack of all trades, man. Special teams, punter, quarterback, safety. And he played like nine years in the league at like on special teams. Yeah, I mean, just a smart football player, cuz. And you know, the one thing I know about Nick, he always played with confidence. He always gave me confidence. He was the one person in that room. It's important to have a good quarterback room. Not just a starting quarterback, but a couple of quarterbacks around who is just knowledgeable, might not be the most gifted guys who can help you get in and out of the huddle. And Nick was one of those guys. No, nah, he was, man. You know, you, you guys had a great quarterback room, too, because you were there with he Al. Did. And, um, Dave. On, Dave. Dave. Deep ball Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big ball Dave. Grant was smart. Grant was super smart. Grant talked more than he talked more than Al. And Al knew the offense. Al knew the system. We got to get Al Noel. Clark on the show. Yo, yeah, we do. Shout out to Al Clark. Grant Noel is for, for those that don't Al. remember. Grant Noel and Al Clark, some really good Virginia Tech quarterbacks. Grant Noel, man, you know, I used, I remember when he got there, he was a country boy, man. <laughs> you used to love picking on Grant. I used to, used to love picking love on Grant. Grant. I used to go over there to his corner and mess with Grant, man. <laughs> man, you, Grant was <laughs> Grant was your guy, cause you you gave him a hard time. Yeah, but, but he respected it. He he loved it. He loved you. Hey, and that was nah. that was a cool thing. Nah, man. But we got another great show today. We got another great guest jumping on here in yes. a few minutes, Mike. And then we also man. getting ready to uh, to talk. Hokey trivia. We also going to give our Hokey shout outs and going to recap that great win over Carolina, man. Um, before I guess Trump jumps on, Mike, did you catch the game? I caught it. <laughs> I caught it. Now, I'm going to be honest. I went over to a high school game. They had a, a, a rivalry game going on down the street. I took my, mm -hmm. my son, my three-year-old son over there. Went and met a coach I know. Shout out to OB. OB doing his thing with the quarterbacks. Took him over there, watched the game. The team quit at halftime. It was crazy. What it, it was a brutal beat down, yeah. So, so I was we was watching the game on the phone and I'm multitasking game for game, but I, I, I caught the fourth quarter and it just seemed like the game is slowed down. From the, I caught the first quarter, game slowed down, and I caught the ending, which was the most important. Yo, that's crazy, man. It's a different time. I don't like to hit on the youngins, just I, you know, they got running clocks now, teams can yeah. just stop playing when they want to. They, and... they left because they, they left at halftime. They walked out the stadium. I couldn't believe it. I hold mean, on, hold they, on. They went to the buses. Hold on. Where were you at? What? Just let everybody know where you at. What? What? Um, I'm in South Florida, and it, it was a team. Um, I don't want to get the names wrong. I know it was Deerfield okay. versus the team, team with another. Uh, Begin with a D. <laughs> Blue uniform. Actually, the team that Jerry Judy played for. Mm, um, okay. Shout out to Jerry Judy. I seen him in high school, and I knew he was going to be a pro. I seen him get triple teamed on the post. Just went to a random game. I try to catch games on Fridays. Just hang out, you know. But this was a good one. It was a rival. It was a rivalry game. And, yeah, it was 28 nothing. One team was getting the best of another. Real, real good. And uh, they decided to, to take it packing. They sent they, – they, 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 well, they was walking to the buses. Couldn't believe it, man. Some good high school players out there, too, because I'm telling you, man, we got, got to influence – some of them guys to, 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 to coming yeah. coming coming up north. 
no question. We yeah, no, no. And Virginia Tech and Florida over the last 20 years, especially during the yeah. Beamer era, had a great relationship with Florida players. Yeah. A great oh, yeah, no doubt. You know, a lot of my go, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, cuz yeah, yeah, Anthony Midget, yeah. Philip Summers, Lauren Johnson. Yeah. So many guys, I, man. Ike Taylor. Ike Charlton. Ike Charlton. I taught you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, I, I taught good. you. I was a beast. Yeah. Um, Terrell Parham. P was, T -P. P was crazy. <laughs> TP. Shout out to TP. Yeah, hey. man. So there's some dudes that came from that from, from up this way. I real quick, man. I was um, as you know, we talked. I was down in South Carolina. Shout out to Shane Beam and Torian Gray. Torian Gray, another Florida. Congratulations, guy. yes. And yes. it looked good. I mean, this is a tech talk and all tech things, you know what I'm saying, show, but Yes. Uh, Shane Beamer and Torian are all forever Hokies, you know, and yeah. uh, and them fans, man, they they are very happy to have Shane down there, man. They showed a lot of love to me and Shane. Yeah, man. That's so what's up. it was a good weekend for a lot of Hokies, man. It was a good weekend Who for they play? Hokies. They played uh, Eastern Illinois, man. It was it look okay, yes, by, yeah, by, yeah. Okay. <laughs> by half warm up. Time, yeah, it was a good warm up. By half time, I was checking Twitter. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Snapchat and all Facebook and all that. Yeah, yeah. What's crazy, the story of that game, before we, I guess, can really jump on him one second, the story of that game was Shane started a grad assistant at what had one year of eligibility left. Yeah. He started a grad yeah. assistant at quarterback. But dude threw the ball well, man. I mean, I, I was in the room with their quarterback. Shane allowed me in to come, you know, sit down and talk to the team and, and, and go out and check practice out and just look and see what, you know, situations needed to be addressed. I really didn't see anything wrong with his team. Like, I didn't see any flaws. I, I seen a bunch of athletes and quarterbacks that were consistent, some a little better than others and some older than the rest. But, you know, the guy that he chose was the guy who was the most qualified, and I can see why he put up some numbers this past week. Yeah, no, no, man. You know, it. It was good, man. It was a good game. If you're a South Carolina Gamecock fan, it was good congrats, for me. Shane. Yeah, congrats, congrats. It was good for me because I've never been to a state uh, uh, to a South Carolina game. I've been to South Carolina. I remember I had some interest from them. I might have been offered by them, but I didn't take no visit there. Um, I'm glad it was a night game because yeah. you know the, the heat was on. The, the heat was on. <laughs> I, I I called you. We talked. When you on your way to? You say I'm actually I'm headed to what to South Carolina for. A football game. I'm like, where? Where you going? Like, God, it's like 180 degrees. Out yeah, there. man. I'm glad that you know, sun so went yeah. down, bro. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, no I was, doubt. No I was doubt. getting ready to contemplate watching that from the hotel room, man. I tell yeah. you, yeah, man. I don't yeah. do, look. I'm done with that heat. I'm done since we played. I remember we had our days, man. The one ten gentry tire flips. People yeah. say, do you miss the game? I said, I miss tripping with my dogs, my teammates. I don't, I miss yeah. playing, but I don't, yeah. I don't miss all that running in the stadium. I don't miss and... pushing the truck. <laughs> I don't miss pushing the truck at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and then and after the truck, man, you go hit the hills. Remember they built the hill? They oh, yeah. The back. Yeah. yeah I don't, I, oh, I the they hill. the hill away. Yeah. The hill is too much now for the kids. <laughs> it's too much. I, I tell you what, whatever they're doing, they need to keep doing it. Our football team looked good last week. They looked very confident. They looked like they had fun playing. I mean, it was it was the number nine ranked team in the country. It was North, it was North Carolina with a Hasman hopeful. And, and they hung in there, man. I was very impressed. Um, shout out to the coaches uh, who put the game plans together and probably and most likely and obviously instilled, you know, that confidence into the players. First it starts with the game plan, and then it's about you believe in, in in the game plan and the system. And, you know, they play fast on both sides of the ball. You know, I agree. And, and for me, because I was, I was not as surprised that Tech won. I was more impressed in how they won. Because, you know, yeah. record record-wise, I believe, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I do know off the top of my dome, Tech entered the ACC in 2004, and Tech is now 14-4 and four against Carolina. Um, the right. one thing Carolina's done since Matt Brown and Dre Blasman mentioned last week is they recruited Virginia and the surrounding areas very well. But at the same right. time, Virginia Tech, Coach Fuente is now 5-1 and one against UNC. Um, you know, they pretty much, and we're going to talk about this real quick, go in depth a little bit more uh, throughout the show, but they left a lot of points on the board, too. Yeah, they, I mean, it, it we was been, in scoring yeah. positions, had some turnovers, uh, 
maybe a pass or a play here and there. Like, we was in position to really put them away early. And, man, shout out to the crowd, though. Oh, Shout out yo. to the crowd, though. Like, hey. VT Nation stand up. It was a bond. Like, y'all, y'all set that place on fire. Listen. And that's the way it's supposed to be, right, cuz? Like, listen, listen. Lane yes. was on smash. <laughs> yo, man, I saw all that orange, and I saw them fans, and I forgot because last year it was terrible. It was, it was, it was terrible. You know, you had the challenge with COVID, and you had the fact that people couldn't be there, and it was just a tough right, season. Right. Then we had a losing yeah. season. Yeah, but yeah, but seeing the fans there, man, and um, it was just it was lit. My real quick, just for our viewers and and, and listeners, yeah. um. I know for me, Inter Sandman was not part of it. It wasn't there for you either, right? No, not there for me either. And yeah. I'm jealous because everybody be texting me like, <laughs> how was it running out the tunnel? I'm like, I never ran out the tunnel to the Sandman. You know, they that's their era. That's them, man. They, they fired them dudes up, man. And, and they they came out and they wasn't playing this week. I, I, I really enjoy watching us. I can get used to that. You know, I love people texting me talking about us and, and how good we look. And man, shout out to the coaches, man. They did their thing. Yeah. And um I didn't have it. When I look back, I was there a few years before you. I remember the spring game, which now tech spring game when they have one, it's fifty thousand plus fans. When I was there, it was my mom, my dad, you know, my sister. Yeah. I could I could I could hear conversations in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you nah, know, they- and then and then I think the sellout streak started your red shirt year when I was there, my last year, 98. Right. And that's when the sellout it was streak started. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, was full. It was yeah. full that year. I, I said, I, I, wrote, I wrote the pines, so I, I seen a lot of what was going on in the stand. I seen a lot of dudes up there taking shots and pads and beers. Yeah. Hey, tell everybody, man, people don't know this. You talking about riding the pine. We were playing Miami. In 1998, and this is when um, Ray Lewis had just left. He had left a few years before, but they still were loaded. They had Ed yeah. Lee, Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne. Al Clark was playing with pure, sure courage, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't know you were a red shirt that year. You went to Coach B, man, Coach Height, and said, yo, put me in. I want to burn my shirt right now. Right? Yeah, I, w- I, went, I-, I went to Coach, and, and I asked him. And uh, Coach looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and I was getting a lot of pressure. It was a lot of outside influence too. It was like, you know, Jamel looking at me like, go say something over there. Jamel Smith? <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, you need to go tell coach you want to play him like, but I'm not ready. And, and honestly, because I wasn't ready, uh, Coach Bainman looked at me real sideways because he knew I wasn't. Um, that was real early in the year. I think we played Miami in like, September, October. The game of football didn't click to me until I was watching film in a meet in the meeting one one day in December. Might have been early December, uh, late November. And Coach Bustle was always like, just keep coming to the meetings, keep coming. You know, I wasn't understanding what was happening on defense. Therefore, I really couldn't comprehend what was I couldn't put it together on offense because you you can't pass the ball if you don't know what's going on with the defense. Coach Russell, just keep on coming, keep on coming, keep traveling. You'll get it. I'm bombing our quizzes that I test the day before the games that we take. I'm bombing those. Really feeling like I, I'm, I never have a chance to play. And, and uh, that football was too hard. And one day I was just sitting in the meat room and, and it was in late November, early December. And the one high, two high concept click. I went to practice and Performed on the scout team, one scout team player of the week. I love telling this story, by the way. Love telling this story. Mm, mm. When scout team player of the week the next week, and I'm like, okay, what I'm seeing on film actually works. So I'm out there burning the defense. Later, It's later in the year, though. It wasn't when we played Miami. It was later in the year. So if I would have burnt that red shirt later in the season, then for the bowl game, which we won, I would have been good. We beat a good Alabama football team that day. Our, our clock played well. Um, but, yeah, so so I didn't learn a game until later on in the year. I never told you this, Cuz, because I was just so excited that I was learning it. After watching you guys go out there and, and play efficient, good football, um, you know, understanding the game and being able to speak the game of football, 
I just wanted that. Um, so so that's why I traveled and, and was just hanging around you guys. It was good because it, it set me up, you know, for the next year. And just my maturi maturity level was off the charts. Yeah, man. No, I, I didn't know all of that. I didn't know that. I remember you on scout yeah. team. That's real, man. Yeah, that's real spill because that's stories untold. That. Yeah, stories I didn't know that. Told. Yeah. I, I, know. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't getting it. I wasn't understanding what was going on. Um, it, it was like the ball would be snapped and it was like every Chinese fire drill. Everybody just going everywhere. I, I, I'm, I don't know what it, I'm just throwing it anywhere. <laughs> I'm locking in, locking in on one receiver, and <laughs> yeah, cause it, it it was frustrating to a point where I, I contemplated quitting. What? I contemplated leaving in the yeah, cause one day me, me and Coach Bama and Coach Bustle set out on the practice field after practice was over, and Coach Bustle told me to get down on one knee in front of Coach Bama. I got down on one knee. He looked me in my eyes. He said, "Son, one day you're gonna get it." But just don't quit on me. I mean, I was having the worst practices of my life. But that's how God worked. I kept at it. I had a coach that believed in me, wanted nothing but the best in me. It took four months from the time I stepped on campus for me to even learn what a cover two defense was or an eight-man front or a stack front, you know how we call it, our protection. Yeah, 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 stack, stack, Yeah, stack. so, so, so it, by the time it all clicked, it was late in the year, but – if it would have clicked a little earlier, Coach Ben would have had no choice but to put me in. I'd have made, I'd have called, Al, give me a minute. <laughs> give me a minute, Al. I had no idea. I think you mentioned it on my podcast that you were homesick and it was a little bit overwhelmed, but I didn't realize you were really that close yeah. to quitting. I didn't know that, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I got, I got homesick late in the year. Um, I got homesick. Really, it started to set in like October, November. And it was because of the frustration. Like, it just mounted. That problem mounted because I wasn't the best football player that I felt like I could be. And, you know, I wasn't understanding the game. And I was like, football can't be this hard. I just came from high school where I threw for 5,000, rushed for 5,000. Why hmm. is this not working? Um, but that day it clicked. Uh, I just – I didn't know – that it was an art to playing the quarterback position. And, you know, if, if you look at the game of chess, you know, I, I feel like that's just all it is. It, it's just moving pieces and, and plugging pieces and taking a chunk out of the defense or, you know, taking a, a piece of the defense that's just opening up, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. It's just one big chess match. And uh, it's very intriguing from that, from that view. And I'm thankful, you know, I had the courage to play the quarterback position the way I did. Because it, it was a lot. What do you think about um, Brummeister, our quarterback there now? Because I saw him. I, like I thought, I, I thought, man, like my son Isaiah loves him because he's mobile. And he's yeah. uh, he was in command of the huddle. I took notes from watching him. He was command of the huddle. He had that one ugly throw where he forced it and he threw a pick late in the game. Yeah. But other than that, yeah. he was efficient. Um, you know, he just, he just knew what he wanted to do with the team. And I look at him, I, th I think, you know, there's a term, I know you know about this, you weren't this, but I hear this in pros, college, and high school game manager. Yeah. But I feel like that's a knock when that's not a bad thing. Everybody can't be you or Patrick Mahomes. Right, it's okay, right. It's okay with managing the game. Yeah. You know, like, <clears throat> Absolutely. How, how'd you think he played? I thought he he was a big reason why they won, you know, why he controlled the game on offense. And, and, and that's why I had so much respect for this game. The, and, and, and the game plan, Burmeister, understanding the game plan. And, and I always thought Fuente had a good offense, a great offense. I like the way it's ran. It looked like a, uh, the offense is being ran around the country efficiently. And, and obviously, you got to have the right athletes in the right places to do some of those things. I get that. But it, it starts with your quarterback being able to make the right decisions, get you in and out of the huddle, understand the play when it's right and when it's wrong and when to check it and, and when to let it flow. And, you know, there are going to be some down points in the game, but I feel like this is a game where the team can learn from. You can go back and watch this one. And, you know, just what it builds, it, uh, a game like this builds character. You learn how to win, the tough ones, because, you, you know, if you can beat the t one of the top teams in the country, then you can you can pretty much beat anybody. You know, you just got to understand that game plan. I thought Burmeister 
play well enough to be the quarterback of the future for the hope. Yeah, man, he uh, he wasn't completely controlling. And, and one thing about Fuente, since he's been at Tech, he's had Josh Jackson. He said he had Gerard Evans. He's got yeah. uh, BB3 now. And he also had uh, Hendon Hooker and even uh, Q, Qu uh, Qu who transferred Quincy, who uh, yeah. transferred, uh, God, North Dakota State, one of those small schools. But um, every quarterback he's plugged in, he's had success with. So I don't see yeah. anything different. I like I like yeah. the fact that, they ran the ball. A lot of people complained about the game plan and the fact that it was ball control. I felt like the whole atmosphere, the defense, and the way the offense yeah. played, it was reminiscent yeah. of our games. It was team camaraderie at its finest. And then you got the you had the crowd playing the factor too. So, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball, all three phases of the game, and Coach Bim would have been proud of the special teams. They did their job. Like, North Carolina was held in check. It was held in check. I don't care how you look at it. They had a Heisman Trophy candidate who had a chance to win it at the end, and he got picked off. Three times. He's feeling three. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's, <laughs> I mean, Monday morning, Sunday morning, it was pretty dismal for him. You know, and mm -hmm. that, that's something that our defense can be proud about. And, you know, we know some of those defensive coaches over there. Those dudes, they they demanding that respect. You can you can see that, you know, our team just look, they look tougher. I enjoyed it, it man. It, it was it was good to see Hokie Nation shine in a primetime game. I think that's what made your two years at Tech um, special because you guys were on primetime a lot. And early yeah. in the early in your career, you know, the first few games, you know, you were just running the offense and you let Corey Moore and Carl Bradley and J John Engelberger and Nate and, and Chad Beasley eat, right? Jamel Smith and Mike right. Hawks. And then right around week four, you just took off. And you, you can yeah. tell you, Dre, Ricky, Shy, Sharon Stiff, and everybody, TP, Emmett Johnson, Derek Carter, Bob Sulkowski just started to take off. And yeah. I think I think you got to rem remind fans that, yes, um, most quarterbacks want to air it out. But I think if you look at what guys do on all levels, especially on the collegiate level, you told me something that was very important. If you win games, NFL scouts, and voters and media and people that know the game will take notice when you win games. Right. Right. You know, and and right. he won games. Um and won you games. won games. And 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 you know, Brummeister, you know, he did a great job. And I thought he managed the game. What did you think about Justin Hamilton, the defensive coordinator, and how he ran the defense? I mean, he took over for a legend yeah. in Bud Foster. Yeah, you know? he took, I mean, the defense. I, I seen some of the coverages they was playing. I I, I seen safeties coming down in the box. I seen the two shell. I, I, I seen a, a defense that was different. I seen a defense that was totally different from what I was used to seeing with Bud. And, um, you know, I faced Bud plenty of times and I watched him on TV plenty of times to know how they was playing. And if a team spread them out, they look different. But, you know, when they and they base packages, you know, Bud defense look a certain way all the time. And, and so, so it was good to see um, you know, just another look at defense, you know, and how the defense is supposed to look. And I, I've gotten used to looking at defenses over the years, but they play fast. They play with confidence. And, and there's some athletes out there because them boys was in some lot coverage out there. They played yeah. some man, too. They played some man. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, um, you know, just a new era of football, and that's always good. And, uh, you know, I, I think shout out you know, to Justin Hamilton, you know, for, you know, putting the, together an amazing game plan and uh, stopping one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. Um, by the way, I guess I want to hear his thoughts. He just texted me a few minutes ago. You would talk. He's getting ready to jump on now. So hopefully it gets on soon because I'm itching to ask him questions because yeah. he is somebody that's going to have some great insight, too. Um, very relatable, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> very relatable. You know him yeah. well. <laughs> um. When you win a game like that, we got Middle, Middle Tennessee. Now, no longer Middle Tennessee State coming up this weekend. Back in Lane Stadium, 2 o'clock kickoff. You played an emotional game. You're the only game on TV. Everybody's watching you. Sell out crowd. Everybody's telling you how great you are around campus. Uh, everybody's getting ACC honors of the week. Some even got some national honors. How do you come down and stay focused? Because historically, Tech, especially when I was there, Y'all had some close calls, but after you left, Tech traditionally, even in the 80s, has wet the bed against inferior opponents. We just, look, right. 
It's just the truth. Right. We I have remember. Not, yeah, yeah, I remember some. You saw yeah. one. You you saw. Yeah. You saw. I think it was UAB. Was it UAB? <laughs> no, no, no UAB. Home? It was my senior year. You Rutgers. Were, you, no Temple. Temple. At, we listen at home. Your homecoming, bro. At we were, home. Listen, we were fourteenth in the nation. Check this out. There's always been a great debate about what's the worst loss: ODU, JMU. Uh, Liberty. I, I tell everybody real quick. <laughs> Temple is the worst upset in Tech yeah, history. Yeah, because yeah, that was um, <laughs> that was. I remember. Temple. I remember Al threw a pick to the house. And I just remember watching him chase the guy down. And I was, nah, nah. You thinking about? I never want to be pick. that guy. Nah. Here's the thing. Al, Al. No, you right about the pick, but it wasn't that game. Yeah. It was Nick Sorensen playing. We okay. were down. Oh, we it was were, Nick? Yeah, we were down to Nick because. Al, you know, he battled that whole year with shoulders yeah, and knees. Banged up. And then Dave Meyer got hurt. If you breathed on deep ball, Dave, <laughs> Dave, yeah, yeah, Dave, yeah. Dave won't take in the punishment. That's my guy. But uh, okay. he had some great moments. But Nick, yeah, Nick was the guy. We were up 17 nothing. Temple came in that game losing 35 straight non-conference, I mean, conference games. So they had lost See, 35, a, straight, 35 straight conference Big East games. We were 20-something point favorites. We were ranked 14th in the country, and we were up 17 points. And here's the thing. Um, we finished that game with over 500 yards of total offense. Um, and after that loss, six teams ahead of us lost in the top 25. Wow. <laughs> so that year in 98, we lost to Temple, which is arguably ESPN and even Sport News and Sports Illustrated still classify that. Is one of the worst upsets in college football history. And then you lose, yeah. And then we lost that same year to your big bro, McNabb. 20, we were uh, up in Syracuse. I remember we, that. Yeah, I remember the throwback. that. That was heartbreaking. That was heartbreaking. And, and then we lost. I was watching uh, that game. Yeah. Like, now I want to be like Donovan. I want to be Donovan. I wanted to be Donovan McNabb, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and then Brandon we also Pope. lost to UVA 29-7, leading 29-7. They came back. We were 29 and 7. So I know how tech fans are feeling this week because it's Middle Tennessee. Um, we're favored by 20. It's a home game. Tech has the advantage. I think Middle Tennessee is starting two, no, three freshman offensive linemen. Um, they won last week against Monmouth, but that was a game they should have won because Monmouth is lower than them as far as uh division one FCBS level, whatever. But tech yeah. should win this game. But I get the apprehension. And the, the nervousness. So, so let me so let me ask you this, cause who you think need to dominate what position group? Because I'm thinking offensive line set the tone in this one. Without question. So, you know, you said something very profound, and I had a few people that hit me after the show, after they watched it. What did Mike mean when he said we never went into a game thinking we were gonna win? And I said, right. what he was saying is, we never, even the games we lost, like Temple, we never <clears> was <throat> like, oh, yeah, it's a wrap. We never went into a game overconfident. If you beat us, we made self-inflicted mistakes. We made mistakes, or that team was just better. But we never came in there cocky or arrogant. And right. I think, to answer your question, because, like, we got to come in, the old line and D-line, to me, when you look at football, especially in the collegiate and even really all levels, is it sets the tone. Like, right. if you move the pocket, if you move the line of scrimmage on offense and on defense, if you play on their side of the ball, you set the tone for the rest of the game because running backs going to get free. They're going to break one because your depth yep. and size should wear them down. Yep. Um, and I think at the end of the day, we can talk about Brummeister, so we can talk about Trey Turner and, and Mitchell, the tight end, and who needs to get touches and the running backs, um, Holston and all of that. We can talk about Shamari Connor. And all the great DBs, um, Dorian Strong. We got some great DBs, but at the end of the day, the LOS line of scrimmage has to set the tone. And I think that's how you win games, especially against an opponent that you are better than. Like you can't, like honestly, you know, once you beat Carolina, you watch film the next morning on on to the next game on Monday. It's over. Yep. The game's over. It's over. It's yeah. over. And, you know what I've been thinking? I'm going to call all my offensive linemen that ever played for me or in front of me, and I'm going to send them some money in the mail. <laughs> you can't take care of them guys enough, man, and I should have did it more. The more I think about my career 
I'm like, man, I should have took care of my offensive lineman. And, you know, when you in the you're in the trenches and you in the grind, you like everybody grinding and trying to get somewhere. But those dudes really sacrifice a lot, and that's where the tone gets set in the game, and it, it starts up front. Yeah, it does, man. I think more quarterbacks and more skill position players need to be more aware. And if they're not aware, they need to really understand how important it is. And also, yeah. you can tell that when you look at even um, the the teams that dominate on college. Look at the – I don't know if you caught the Clemson game. I caught the second half. We got yeah, back to the hotel room. Clemson gave up – the offensive line gave up seven sacks. I think it might have been more than that. Seven, seven or eight sacks. Wow. And then you look at you look at teams like Alabama, they look like they're well on machine. We talk about <clears> their <throat> skill guys, but if you look at Alabama, the constant within their program is defense and offensive line. Defense and offensive line. <laughs> they smashing you up up front. They look bigger, <laughs> they look more fit. Yeah. Whatever they eating down there. <laughs> their training table. What we what, what, what we used to call ours, what we had. The hokey, uh, the hokey table is something. Yeah. Know, he had something going on at Dietrich. Yeah. yeah. Well, Shout look, out to Dietrich, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, they got Shout so out much. To we, grab we got so much better stuff. Finally, I guess it's jumping on, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he's been dealing with some real bad storms down the way, but we oh, got man. a really great guest joining us right now. I got ACC Player of the Year. Brian Randall is joining us right now. He's getting logged on, man. I can't wait to pick his brain and talk to him about his Brian, time at Tech. Like Brian, like he ain't never jumped on. You know, you can pull in the parking lot and jump on the zone, baby. Hey, if he was this late when he time. played, if he was late when he played like this, he probably wouldn't have started. Beans would have had him good. bouncing. He was a good player. You know, we always talk about the thing me and Brian always talk about and what he quick to say is, I had to come fill your shoes. And he think that's the funniest thing. And I'm like, well, you did a good job because you won ACC Player of the Year. And he, <laughs> and he carried the torch. And I can hey. only imagine for a guy like Brian coming in and having to carry that torch. Like, he did it on a high level. Hey, Brian, how you doing, B? What's going hey, on, what's, man? What's going on, man? Can y'all hear me all right? Yeah, we hear you We can good. hear you. Yeah. Hear you hey, okay, hey, okay. There you go. Hey, listen. Hey. There you I go. had to call an audible, baby. I had to call an audible. <laughs> Listen, I feel, I'm always I'm, that's why they call me scramble like Randall. I'm always scrambling. Hey, no power in the crib. I'm scrambling to my mom crib. Like, yo, let me get on this. Man, we, Make, hey. Look, set up. Look, let me show y'all my set. I'm gonna show y'all my setup because I got let to the crib. See. I said, Mom, let me get something real quick. If I came through. <laughs> oh, you had to okay. throw mom a couple dollars to sit right okay. there. Hey, hey, hey. yeah. Okay. Look, hey. Look. Hey, mom got everything still at my hey, mom's, mom's got, bro. Let's talk about it. Let's get it because <laughs> for real, you repped out. I like your hat, You're looking good, bro. Life hey, look. is good. I know life is good for you right now. Hey, oh my, oh yo, so far, hey, it's so far, he got, the VT, he got the VT drip award right now. We got other guests coming. Ah. So, Brian hey, Randall man, has set the tone. Brian Randall has set the tone. Self promotion. Self promotion. <laughs> Self -promotion. Yes. Shameless yes. plug. <laughs> I mean, for real, Virginia Tech legend, though. Virginia ah. Tech legend. You know Listen, it. Like we, he, he, hey, but 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 you talk about replacing Mike. Mm -hmm. You were there with another Vic, my cousin, his brother Marcus. So like, yeah. you know, Virginia Tech for a long time had a stretch of quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You talk about Mike. Marcus, you know, Tyrod came after you, but even yep. um shout out to Jim Drunken Miller, Will Ferrell, you yep. Ferrell, you go back in the day. I mean, um Virginia Tech he played had a in the pros. Yeah, he played in yep. the pro. It was a great one. Um, and I'm sorry if I'll admit somebody. Maurice DeShazo. You know Clark. what I'm saying? Al yep. Clark. Al Clark. Yeah. So I mean, Virginia Tech had it. And Brian, when you came in, man, like people don't know you were a big time recruit because you were a hooper and you played uh, football. Also, I remember David telling all those guys a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago, had the controversial Daily Press 100. Remember that? You made it. Ronald Curry made it. Leroy Keys, uh, Mike, I, everybody that was who, who was in it. There was a P. Allen Iverson. That's big. Oh, yeah. and I was, yeah. I remember, I knew Brian Randall, obviously. I went back and read his write up. I said, yo, B. Randall over at Bruton, right? Yeah, you would do it, you know, because Williamsburg, we always, if you're in Hampton and Newport News, 
you know, he was like, oh, yeah, y'all win. You know, because Lafayette, when I – now, Lafayette's winning stakes now. When we yeah. played <laughs> – yeah. When I played, I was like, yeah, coach, put me at running back. Yeah. <laughs> See, y'all so disrespectful, man. Y'all disrespectful. Bro. Let's, let, me get some, let me get something off my chest real quick. Let me get something off my chest. Yeah, Listen, yeah. I, I was so tired in high school of people disrespecting Williamsburg, <laughs> disrespecting Bruton. You know, look, I had to defend myself everywhere I went. Where you from? Oh, you ain't y'all ain't even really part of the seven five seven. Oh, y'all ain't playing nobody. Where you from, Brute? Oh yeah, y'all a double A school. Oh man, that, this shouldn't count, man. Who y'all playing against? I mean, this was hey, everywhere. Hey, everywhere. I, 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 I was, went, I, I, was one those, I was one of those. I was one. I was one of those guys. It was like it's a good quarterback coming out of Brute, and I was like, yeah, he coming out of Brute. <laughs> it's like he coming out of Brute. Hey, <laughs> I ain't know you was that good though, bro. You, you I mean, you was. He was a step above the rest for sure. Hey, listen, no, no lie. Like, this is probably a story nobody really knows. So when I was coming out my senior year, um, I can't remember who invited me, but somebody invited me down to Warwick High School to work out. Mm-hmm. Now, I had never really, you know what I'm saying, interacted with the Peninsula Cats, you know what I'm saying, as far as no camps, you know what I'm saying, no quarterback right. camps. Like, right, none right. Of that, none, all that stuff yeah. was – it wasn't really like it is now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is like my first chance to really be in the mix. You know what I'm saying? With some peninsula guys, you know? So I'm out there. It's me. It's Marcus is out there. And they got B Hill and all the war cats. I'm the only cat basically by myself. It's like a team yeah. camp. You know what I'm saying? So I'm out there by myself, bro. I felt so like so out of place. You know what I'm saying? Like I yeah. wanted to prove myself, but yes. it really wasn't a place. You know what I'm hey. saying? Like they had yeah, their yeah. plays and they favorites. And I was just yeah, kind of out yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? Shot. Hey, like, was big hey shot. you prove yeah. yourself, though. I'm and you was like, wait till I get the tech. Wait till I get the tech. <laughs> Listen, that's all I could do was like, look, well, I'm still the number one player in the state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, hey. Ooh, I still got I, hey, I heard that. I, hey, I heard that even without my headphones. You said, I'm that's still number one player in the state. <laughs> I love how you – listen. So, hey, hey, B. Randall, I interviewed you several years ago when I was writing for Rivals. Or it was Rivals of 247. And I, and I was mm-hmm. impressed with you then. When I used to come back to Tech, I used to catch you, you know, going over the castle. I used to always tell you, man, I was a big fan. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I saw, I, I've often said, though, before we talk about that 2004 team and also we talk about the current Tech team, mm-hmm. I remember um, in 2003, you guys got off to 8-0. and oh. I, I've said this. I've gone on record. Real? Yeah, listen, Mike, Mike, you were doing your thing in the league. You were on the cover of Madden. Yeah. You were down in the ATL with T.I. and Usher stories, and Video. Though. I love these listen, type of stories. listen. 2003, I've told D Hall this, I've told Vegas Robinson this, I've said this on many radio shows, was one of the most talented tech teams of all time. They started off, they won at Texas A&M, the first non-conference win at Texas A&M in 12 years. They beat Texas A&M with Hatch, the 12th man. They beat LSU at home. Yes, at home, not at LSU, but in Blacksburg. Mm-hmm. Twenty six to seven. You know, I think like I was there. You, you, you were there. You and Marcus. That's when, jer- yep. that's when you got your jersey. That's when you got your jersey. That's when you had your jersey frame, and they they retired. Well, they retired the whole flag. You were there. Kevin right. Jones and Suggs and B. Randall put on the show. Controlled the line of scrimmage. Made LSU look slow. And wow. Nick Saban was the coach. Nick Word. Saban was yes, he was the coach. Who was so the quarterback? Check- Jamarcus Russell. I don't even remember mm-hmm. the quarterback. I just know they no, went I home with it. threw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. But now here's the catch. They 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 smashed Rutgers. They they destroyed Syracuse. D. Hall had two punt returns for a touchdown. Should have had three. Brian Randall had one. And I know you on this call, Mike. I know this is your show. But Brian Randall had an I'm amazing run, run against Syracuse. Very reminiscent of – when J- Gerard Evans, another great Virginia Tech quarterback, cut him back and yeah. forth against East Carolina, Brian Randall broke around the end. I think he might have cut back eight times. I think it was uh, 80 man. yards. I think it was 80. 80. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I think it might have get... been a little less than 80, but it was close enough. I want to I, I want to hear about that magical season too. Now, but 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 that but that was 03. The the problem with that team, the problem 03. with that team, they took a loss to Pitt, they took a loss to West Virginia, they lost to Boston Shame College. On. They lost. They finished the season. They did beat Shame UVA. On them dude. No, no. Excuse me. They didn't. Hey, they no. didn't. They didn't. What happened? They, they on, went man. to UVA and lost. So I say that to say, 
what was going through your mind before we talk about the two four two thousand four season, man? Because that because mm -hmm. do you agree with my sentiments? How talented y'all? Y'all had Jake Grove at center, Jake no. Grove, Ernest Wilford. Absolutely. Oh. Ab yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> o o three O three team. O three team was the most talented team that I was on at tech. And we I think we had the worst record that well, I think we finished with the worst record that year that eight of any five. other year. Eight I was and five. at eight and five. Eight and five that year with the most talented team that I had, you know what I'm saying, the pleasure of playing with at Tech. And yeah, it was, I mean, it was crazy, Mike, because we started off, we started off hot. I started off hot. I mean, we were just, I mean, we were feeling ourselves. We were feeling ourselves. Yeah. And that Rutgers game, we went in there and um I I was actually, I had Heisman, like I had Heisman. You know what I'm saying? Like representation as far as going right, into right. that game. Like even yeah, after that some, game, some recognition. I was on the list. Yeah. yeah. I was, you know, they start putting out the Heisman Watch. The Heisman <laughs> Watch. Yeah. Watch. yeah. So I'm, feel, I'm feeling good. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, oh, we rolling. We This is our year. Our squad, like we we ready. Man, after that, we went into that WVU game. A Wednesday night game. It was a Wednesday night. At, it was a strange at WVU. night. Our at word. WVU. I put it on record. WVU, I... Oh, they I hated tough. playing them the most out of anybody. It was tough. Yeah, they was tough. They was it, tough. it was just, it was like, you know how you just had them teams that just, they just give you trouble. Yeah. WVU was that for me. They gave yeah. me trouble every year. <laughs> every year. I, going, I was like, I noticed the hump game going every. So we go down to WVU, man, hostile crowd. You know, you know the environment. It's, yeah. it's crazy. I know the vibes. You know? I know and the vibes time, out there. Vibes, yeah. vibes is crazy every time. I still feel it. And, and man, I mean, they just, bro, we. They stomped the mud hole in us. I mean, really? it took, took our heart, bro. And it was their last year ah, in the Big East, so it was personal. Year. It was, uh, I believe, I don't know the final school. It might be like 28 to 7. It was crazy. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah, it, yeah. it, it was. What bowl, it was, what bowl yeah. game did y'all play in that year? Um, Insight.com. <laughs> Insight uh, versus Aaron Rodgers. Like, I mean, Aaron Rodgers. I, it was Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers at Cal. Cal. Yep. Yep. That's, that's how we that. finished the season, I mean, against Aaron Rodgers. In Cal, but I mean, it was like that was wow. the season that it was kind of going down, and that's the season of them, you know, what I'm saying swapping me and, and Marcus, yeah, yeah. you okay, know, that, that whole that. thing. And that, that. that situation was just a bro, it was just a mess. That's gotta situation. be, I know that, I know that was tough. It, it got messed, it got messed, yeah. not personally, it, but the thing was, it wasn't, it never, it never got personal between. Me and Marcus, like the quarterback room right, was right. never really divided. I'm talk, yeah, and I'm and I'm talking about as far as just like uh, just the feel of the game, the fit, and yes, just you know yeah. having that sense of like ownership. This is my team. Who whose team is it? You right. know what I'm saying? That's kind of what it right. turned into, and and it was so weird because even though they swapped us, I started every game. Yeah, right. But there was games that Marcus played more than me. You see what I'm saying? So it was it, it got to the point where they were like, okay. You're going to start the game. Then we're going to bring him in the second <clears throat> quarter. Whoever's playing better is going to finish out the game. That's how oh, we were yeah. going into the game. Who was the, uh, who, was no, the no officer, rhythm. who was the officer coordinator that year? Was it Steinspring? Brian Steinspring. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, it was interesting, man. You had you – had, before we talk about that 4 season, one of, your, one of the best seasons in tech history, mm. you against Miami when D. Hall, Coach Beamer got mad, he muzzled D. Hall, not literally, figuratively, but – he told D. Hall to stop talking because he came on the pregame press and said, I think Miami, who was on a 31-game winning streak, <laughs> who had everybody. I'm yeah. talking about household names, just like I named with Tech, with Jimmy Williams and Brian Randall. Tech in Miami, everyone knows, is a huge robbery, especially during the Big East days. Yeah. And D. Hall said, I feel like we can beat him. I feel like they're not really all that. Like, D. Hall was talking. I'm paraphrasing, but D. Hall yeah. has never been one shy of words. And Shout out to D. Hall. Shout out to D. Hall. Shout out D. Hall. Hey, That's but Brian, boy. you on that game, Tech was controlling the game, but they sat you down for the rest of the game. Marcus came in. Yep. Uh, Kevin Jones was in his bag. Eric Green had a pick six. I mean, the defense was phenomenal, but yeah, defense Marcus, was crazy, Marcus threw a touchdown pass Ernest to Ernest Wilford, Wilford over mm -hmm. Sean Taylor. Mm -hmm. What stood out to me that game was that that's how talented Tech was because Tech destroyed Miami 31-7. to Brock Berlin threw a 9,000 picks. Mm -hmm. But what, 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 even though I was a proud woman as an alumni and a former player, I watched how you carried that whole time with class because that had to be yeah. hard because you didn't complain. You didn't enter the transfer portal. It didn't exist back then, but you still could have transferred. But you handled it with class, man. I mean, 
Were you happy y'all won or were you mad that they, they didn't put you back in? Man, I was just, no, I was, first of all, I was ecstatic that we won. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, that was a, a huge game. You know what I'm saying? And the way that the season was going, like, we still had opportunity after winning that game to maybe run the table yep. and still do something great. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was a great atmosphere. I mean, the game was live. So for me, I was ecstatic that we won. On a, on a player basis of how I felt about the whole situation, yeah, I mean – I wasn't happy, um, but that just teammate that I was. Yeah, as a as a teammate, that's not you, right? My right. guys, they rooted for me. We went. I mean, because you know, you go through all this stuff as a team, off season workouts. You're always together, so yeah. it's like it's a family. It's yeah. a family. Yeah. Everybody got their personal yeah. stuff that they want to do on the field, but as right. a family, no, I'm happy for my guys personally. Right. I'm pissed. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm pissed that <laughs> yeah. I wasn't Yeah, no to, doubt. The competitor in you. Yeah, yes. Competitor in yeah, you. I wanted, and, and, and I, I wanted to throw that touchdown Marcus through. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I wanted to be a part right. of that, you know, as far as playing-wise, um, you know, that big win. So, yeah, right. I mean, I, I was upset in that regard. But, no, nah, as yeah. feeling, I mean, for my teammates and the whole the whole thing as a whole, I mean, I was ecstatic we it, won. We beat it's Miami. A, it's, a, it's, it's emotional stuff. And, and let me tell you what that did for me, for you, when you came to Atlanta. When you got drafted, uh, well, there was unrestricted free agent. You know, I, I can't remember. I can't recall. You came yeah. to Atlanta. Hey, cuz, he came to Atlanta, and I took him under my wing. Mm -hmm. We roomed together, told him mm -hmm. I got a West Coast system. Mm -hmm. um, he learned it. He perfected it. Uh, you know, he had a good preseason, and then, you know, it, you know it, that all kind of went away, but we developed a relationship from there and it's been a, a long friendship that has lasted a lifetime. Now we, we like ultimate competitors in golf. We won't get into that. We will at some point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. know right now, but uh, you know, yeah. But as far as just the friendship and, and it showed your true character. And I watched that situation from afar D and I, and I seen Brian handle it with so much class. And then going to have success afterwards, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Well, yeah, yeah and and that success, you know, it seemed like your entire team, the guys that returned, you guys come back, and it's your first year in ACC. You guys mm -hmm. got picked out of the, I think y'all were like eleventh or tenth out of, uh, y'all were down there, like we behind Wake Forest. Yeah, we I mean, y'all were being disrespected, even though y'all came yeah. off a, you know, underachieving eight and five season. Y'all still had mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. Y'all still had 10 win seasons. Y'all still had Bean Stein, Spring, Coach Hike, Coach Gentry, Coach Foster. Yet um, you guys, along with Miami, were the first two teams in Boston College, I believe, to go mm -hmm. to the Big East that year. And I mean, ACC that year. And y'all start off with a juggernaut in the two-time defending national champions, USC and FedEx Field. And you lose a tough one. And then you come back. And you win, and you guys beat Duke in the home game or whatever for your first inaugural ACC win. You played great that game. Then y'all lose Good another tough one. NC State, so y'all are two and two. And then all of a sudden, man, you went on a historic run. Not just you by yourself, but that team. Right. right. I mean, right. You, you led them to a Sugar Bowl berth, um, but you also got player of the year. And, mm -hmm. I mean, you got in the zone. I mean, I don't. I think the only bad play I remember you having that whole season was that throwing across the field against the pick against West Virginia, the team that mm -hmm. gave you trouble. Y'all won that game. Mike Ebo. I remember yep. that. Trying to screen, yeah. You yep. was like, I remember I, that. I was yelling at the screen like, "Yo, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Why you bring well, up your yeah. memories? Look, you bring yeah. up your memories. <laughs> pop in my head like yesterday. Hey. I can remember yeah. the whole play. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but that, that was, was crazy. but 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 B Randall. At the end of the day. You know, paying homage to you, even if you weren't my guy, even if you weren't a tech guy, you know, that was a great season because, again, I'm not picking on today's guys because even back then, guys would leave or they would quit or they would go on the, on the radio or bad yeah. mouth their coaches or they would be like, yo, I ain't, I ain't sticking around for this. You came through and you led, you know, tech to, um, you know, Sugar Bowl birth. Y'all lost to Auburn by three. Could have won that game, mm -hmm. should have won that game. You guys beat Miami on the road. You had a dime to Eddie Royal. Uh, a dime to Eddie yep. Royal. Your yep. receiving core was ridiculous, by the way. Off the charts. <laughs> Off 
off the chart. Yeah, and Bima Bima seemed like after that USC game, he was like, you know what? I'm going to my young guys. He put yeah. those young receivers in. He did. And, and, and you guys, I mean, Mike Emo was special. You had that big win against UNC where y'all, Mike Emo set the rushing record for 200-plus yards. Yep. Yep. Jim Davis had the sack that pulled him out of field goal range. Mike, I yep. could just spit this stuff off like you happened yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all facts. facts. Hey. All facts. Gosh. Yep, all like, facts. That's, man, I mean. Hey. <laughs> but be impressive. random. Hey, hey yeah. but, but just, nah, man, go back to that to that year, man. Did it feel real good to win the ACC that went over UVA, that went over Miami, to be player of the year, man, to win 10 games? That was big. I mean, like, just go back to that moment. I know you've moved on in your life, but at the same time, those are, mm -hmm. that's a special time, right? Hey, very special. I mean, my 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 senior year at Tech was a accumulation, and it was kind of like, listen, here here's here's to celebrate all the work you've put in, all the stuff you've been through, um, you know, from all the time you've been at Tech, all the ups and downs. You know, it was a, it was it was it was satisfying. You know, very satisfying. Yeah. You know, because as a player. My goal was always, uh, of course, you know, everybody wants to win a national championship, but my goal is always make it to a BCS Bowl. You know, I watched right. Mike and him do it, them get to the, right. to the Sugar right. Bowl. You know, that that was my turning yeah. point, making me really go to Tech. You know what I'm saying? Seeing yeah. it, I'm like, I want to be part of some, something like that. So my senior year going into the season, you're right. We were picked, I mean, down. You know, people were kind of counting us out because we had lost a lot of players to NFL, underclassmen, you know, to the NFL. Right. So they were like, oh, they're young. They're trying to rebuild. They're moving into a new conference, you know, coming off an eight and five season. You know, really, they only got a couple of bright spots. But honestly, we had leadership in all the right positions, man. We had leaders. Right. We just needed young guys to kind of step up and play bigger than freshmen. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and right. after those first two games, I mean, that was kind of like our building block. Like, OK, you know, y'all, y'all got y'all feet in the game. You know what I'm saying? Now it, it's, yeah. it's time to ride. Like, we're going to do something. Let's do something. And I, I remember vaguely and I, mean, I, said, I remember vividly Coach, um, Coach Rogers. Shout out to Coach Rogers, man. Coach Rogers brought me in the quarterback room. It was me and him. He said, B, he called me B. He said, B, we can win. We can win out. He's like, I'm, I'm telling you right now. Like, he's like, I'm not just saying this. He was like, the way that our schedule is set up, we can win out. It's a very legitimate chance that we can win out. I'll never forget him bringing me in that room and saying that. And Kevin Rogers, him. right? Kevin Rogers. Coach Kevin, Kevin Rogers. He was like, Marcus Vicker never touched this field again. <laughs> he <laughs> said that? He said that? No, I'm just, no, oh, that's no. what we ran to think it. Hey, Marcus, he never touched the field again. Marcus, he Marcus, played receiver, though. I, he, I think he, um, no, that he played receiver in 2000. I think Marcus, yeah. that was the year he got in he trouble, got right? He got suspended. Yeah, he, always wanted, he always mm -hmm. wanted to be a receiver. I used to throw the ball to him in the backyard when he was little. <laughs> he always had hands, so that was always a thought. Ooh, yeah, he, was a nice, he was nice at receiver, though. Yeah, he, he really was. Nice. was. I don't know if he really wanted he to be was. there, but he was nice, though. He looked the part. Yeah, he looked the part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he caught one TD. He caught one TD from me in the inside bowl. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. yeah he did. What you think he about, did. Yeah, what you think about the Hokies this weekend? This past weekend. Oh man, hey, I was excited, bro. I didn't even go front. I didn't know. I didn't know. I think I was at the point where everybody else like we don't really know exactly what to expect. You know what I'm saying? Coming off nah. last year. You know, you got right. Jay Ham stepping in as the D coordinator. He got his feet wet mm -hmm. last yep. year. So I'm like, okay, let's see what he's gonna that. do. New yep. quarterback, um, you know what I'm saying, receivers, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you had a whole bunch of new faces, a lot of guys coming in that, you know, were kind of unproven, like what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily freshmen, right. but, you know, what, what they're going to do. And then UNC is like, okay, they lost a couple of guys, but they ranked number 10 in the country. So, and all they talked about was the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So Damn I'm how. thinking, yeah, so I'm thinking how, let's, let's, I mean, we in for, we in for a U.S., uh, a, a tester. You know how you got them first games. Where we yeah. usually play three years in a row before USC, it was hold on, it's SmackDown time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're playing these teams yeah. where we, yeah. we know what we're getting into. You know, we're gonna be out in three quarters. You know what I'm saying? It, it's no issue. They might not score. We're opening up. Yeah, we hey, opening hey, up. Hey, 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 hey they, we repaid North Carolina this week, this past weekend for what they did to cousin them in that bowl game that one time. <laughs> hey, cuz man, we talked about this last week. Listen. I'm so glad we whipped them this past week because they did job. <laughs> yeah, they Talk did about us. that. Hey, look, man. They, <laughs> hey, I tell people all the time, Mac Brown was in his bag those few years at Carolina before he left to go to Texas because you guys know I'm older than you both. And Carolina that year had – he has two great seasons where they were, like, 
tough losses to Florida State. And back then it was called the Alliance Bowls before they went to BCS Bowls. So you had the Sugar and the Orange and the Rose. And Carolina, because they lost to Florida State, you get dropped down to the Gator Bowl. So back then the ACC second yeah. place typically played the Big East second place. And they had Vonnie Holiday, Dre Bly, Ebenezer Ekubon, um, uh, DJ, uh, my, man, my man from Deep Creek, the big running back, Dion, was it Dyer? Deion yeah. Dyer. Deion right? Dyer. They, they, yeah. they, they had everybody everywhere. They, I mean, wow. Greg, Ellis, Greg Ellis was so, I, in front of me is Bonnie Holiday, and to my left, in front of Derek Smith, the left tackle, is uh, Greg Ellis. And Greg, I'm 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Greg Ellis is like a transformer. He looked like Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah, he was. And, just, um, you know, yeah, our yeah. best, some of our, some of our best players were in the stands with my family because they were the injured or red shirts. So you had Ricky Hall, Andre Davis, Sharon Stith, all, you know, in the stands. And we had Nick Sorensen at quarterback. And he got uh, MVP, uh, offensive MVP at the Gator Bowl because he was running for his life. Uh, Carolina should have been there, man. It was crazy. That game was right. on NBC. This is how bad it was. I, I I don't know if I ever told you this, Mike or, or B. Randall. I told my family, don't come to the game. <laughs> I said, and you know what's funny? Don't come. They were like, no, we're going to come support. They had signs made. I got a lot of family in Jacksonville, Florida. I said, don't come, man. Um, Beamer, Coach Beamer, I love, I love Coach Beamer, man. I love all those guys, Stein bringing them. But they, that whole week, because this is back in the day when you went full pass, like, every day. And, right, you know, right. they were, we were beat up. And I remember thinking, man, we need a break, man. But Mm. Bema was just trying to get us ready, but you know, I went into that game along with everybody, man. We were ready for it to be over. And um irrational thinking. Irrational Carolina thinking. Yeah, Carolina, they 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 and, took it to us, man. And, and, and Brian, you never when Brian, you never faced Carolina, correct? No, he so did. No. that first year in ACC. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the game. ACC, they, did. There was, was a big game. game. It my emo rushed for over 200 some yards. Yeah, we killed them nice. on the run game. Yeah, I, look, I, re nice. look, I remember that game. Look, so you remember sometimes you remember game plan. So our game plan going to that game was we had a check where, you know, we come to the line and, you know, whether they they overload on this side, we run the opposite side. They overload right, on this right. side. Run out, check with we me. ran that check over and over and over <laughs> and <laughs> over. <laughs> emo, I mean, Emo thrashed on that game. You would think that you would think the D coordinator would at some point pick up on the check, right? Bruh, we had a good look. And it, the thing is, you know, how sometimes you go to game, game plans, you'd be like, yo, it's not good. Like, yeah, yeah, it may work, but it ain't gonna work like you know what I'm saying, like it. But hey, that just gonna work the whole game. Hey, so, hey cuz, yo, can I ask one more question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get, yeah, get yeah. into our little trivia and all that. Yeah, yeah, what you think about BB3? You know, that's I what I was, get that one no, no, that's what I want to ask. I want to, that's what I want to ask. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Burmeister, what you think about him? Burmeister, I was impressed. I was, oh, I, I thought. I thought watching him, and I and this is basically an unbiased because you know I really didn't know I hadn't seen him in the spring. I hadn't seen like none of the practices or anything. So right. my first thing that I thought when watching him was he's under control. He has a grasp of the offense. I he's in control this, of the game. Man, that's what I was saying, bro. That, that was my first thing when I saw <laughs> yep. him. Like, yo, that, and it, it was evident. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you know you you see a guy, it, it seemed a little bit of panic. You know, quick. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anxiety. But looking to get up out of there. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Quick. Yeah. We've all been there. See the rush when it's not coming. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. He, he looked really in control of what was going on play by play, situationally. Right. You know what I'm saying? There was never a point where I felt like he looked like, you know, like there in the headlights. I mean, right. from from start to finish, I mean, I, I was impressed. He I looked good. Impressed. And he was rocking yeah. your jersey. And he was rocking the three piece. He was, so he, looked, <laughs> <laughs> he was rocking the three piece. So I was and like, yes. And I like somebody out there doing the big rocking your like jersey. It. Yeah, Shout I, out I to like Kevin it, Jones. Man. Shout out B BB three. So that, well, that's what they go with BB three. Yeah, BB three. BB three. BB three. I feel BB3. it. Shout out to BB three. You did the damn. <laughs> Shout out to BB three, man. Much love hey. this weekend. Hey, no, no, absolutely, man. So, um, B Randall, I, you know, as I told you in prepping for uh, the show, man, we had um the great Andre Davis last week. We broke in a segment called Hokey Trivia. So. Yeah. You are the second guest on that show. We're going to go back to that. It's, it's already become a fan favorite. Shout out to Hokey Nation. The, the viewers for our first show, the feedback, the DMs, the text messages, the tweets, we appreciate y'all, man. And we're going to keep this thing going, especially this Hokey trivia. So I picked the questions. Um, it's, it's you, 
Brian and uh, Mike, I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna go back and forth. I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot, but I got a few. So we're gonna right. dive into it. This one, this one is going. I'm gonna start with you, Brian, because I think okay. Mike should know the answer. Who was the starting quarterback, V, at Virginia Tech the year before Mike took over as a starter? Was it A, Jim Drunken Miller, B, Al Clark, C, Maurice DeShazo, or D, Dave Meyer? Who was the starter before Mike took over? A, Al Clark. B, me, B, Al Clark, Al Clark? Al you Clark. are you want correct. <laughs> Al Clark. <laughs> Hey, now, now it could it could have been it could have been tricky because people don't realize this. Mike came in, you know, he was overshadowed by Ronald Curry, who was the Gatorade National Player of the Year in both football and basketball in high school. They won the yep. same district. You know, Ronald was also a McDonald's All American, but Mike was also ranked nationally. So, but here's the thing: Coach Bustle, the offensive coordinator at Virginia Tech at the time, along with Stein Spring and Coach Beamer. Dave Meyer was a starter, not yes. listed, but he was named number one on the depth chart. Mike had to beat him out. But technically, you're right, you and Mike, because Al Clark was the starter the year before. But yeah. Dave Meyer, shout out to Dave Meyer. Shout, shout out to Dave. That's my boy. A, <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave taught me everything, a, a lot of what I knew. I say that. Yeah, and you know, man, and I'm glad you both on here because – and going back to Brummeister, man, in the offense, I heard fans, you got to stretch the field and you got to do this. I feel like when you look at the great quarterbacks, even on the collegiate level, when you manage the game, you, you can manage the game plan efficiently. It may call for more runs. Right. I know right. they're going to stretch. They got Trey Turner. They got um, Tavion Robinson. They got playmakers. They got Mitchell. But that game was about keeping um, Sam Hall off, Sam Hall off the field and making yeah. sure – they didn't yeah, turn the yeah. ball over. And I think yeah. it worked perfectly. And you just yeah. said it, controlling the game. There are going to be games where he's going to throw for 3,000. There's going to be <laughs> some games where you got to hold tight. You yeah. got to come together. And that was one yeah. of the games. Here we go. So, all right, question number two. This is going to be interesting. For how many seasons was football the only sport in which Virginia Tech competed in the Big East? So, again, Virginia Tech went into the Big East in football in 2004. Um, but, of course, at the time, different sports were in different conferences. It was kind of weird. Yep. So yep. was it A, 10 seasons before the other sports joined? Was it 19? Was it 14? Or D, was it 11 seasons? Brian. Hold on. You confused me on the question. You said how many years were there in the, the big? How many seasons? How many seasons was football the only sport? So football joined the Big East in 2004. And then after a certain amount of years, the other sports. The Big East or the ACC? On, on. ACC. Yes. The yeah, ACC. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. ACC, the 2004. ACC in 2004. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. okay. Now I'm with All you. Right. Okay. All right. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm confusing myself. Let's go back. But how okay. many seasons was football the only sport which Virginia Tech competed in the Big East? This is when Virginia Tech, I apologize, joined the Big East. Got you. Yeah, okay. so how many years before the other sports joined the Big East? Because so, people That's don't realize right. there were other sports that joined after Virginia Tech joined. Because so some sports in the Atlantic 10, right? Yes, there you go. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah weird. okay, you yeah. know what I you're talking about. Weird. Yeah. So yeah. Virginia yeah. Tech was the only sport in the Big East. And then basketball came and track and yeah. all of that. So was Ooh. it was it 10 years they were just the only pro sport in the Big East? Was it 19 years? Was it 14 or 11? I'm gonna say eleven. Okay, you going with eleven? Yeah. You no, know, Mike. How many years before the other sports joined the Big East? I'm gonna say nineteen. It took a minute. All right, Brian, you are close, but it was actually ten years. It, it, I but still, this was ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wanted to say ten. I do remember <laughs> landing ten. Though. That's that's all with basketball. I do. And you know that. what, man, diehard fans, the old. The old school, the OGs know it. I, I I looked at that question a few times. That's probably why I got confused because I forgot that. I forgot we were in the A-10. Um, yeah, all right. right. Let's get back to uh, the football field. Um, right. Which former – this is a tricky one. I'm going to read it slow. Which former Big East team did Virginia Tech defeat to win the 2007 ACC football title? So Tech won the ACC championship in 2007. Um, was it Duke? 
NC State, Wake Forest, Boston College. Boston in College. 2000. Boston College. BC. All right. Okay. I gave you a gift. That's a All right. <laughs> oh, I, I don't. I, I'm gonna be shocked if y'all get this because uh, I I looked at this. I looked at this joint like what? All right. So when did Virginia Tech play their first nationally televised game? This is Virginia Tech football, their very first nationally televised game. Was it A, 1967, B, 1966, C, 1970, or D, 1969? Wow. Woo. Wow. I'm going to say C. What, you going to 1970? Yeah, in the 70s. All right. It came into the decade right. <laughs> <laughs> it broke in. B. Randall, which, what you going with? 1967, 1966, 70, or 69? Man, I'm going to go with – I ain't saying what – I don't think there was no game in the 60s. <laughs> I don't think we did that in the 60s. I'm going to go with 1970. <laughs> Listen, you're going you, you gonna to join the goal. You're going to yeah, join we'll go yeah. the 70. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. The correct answer is 1966. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yes. I had no idea. That yeah. That's the leather helmet days. Yeah. Hey, okay. that's, that's, that's before we so, so we've been, yeah. So we've been getting, <laughs> so we've been getting some notoriety from, since back in the day. I don't know who they played. I wonder what they were done for. I didn't have <laughs> who time did they to play. Play. I don't know who they played. Probably VMI or. Some school yeah. from Arkansas. I have no idea, we'll man. look it up. Who was the coach? We'll look Who was the coach? Who was the I don't know, man. I don't know. Listen, and you know, it won't too many of us on the team. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It was, yeah. Right. It was, it was yeah. different. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was different okay. Time. Okay. And this is going to be funny. In 2003 and 2004, Mike, I'm going to start with you. There were two Virginia Tech players who also played on the Virginia Tech basketball team. Were they Jeff King and Mike Emo, B, David Clowney and Josh Morgan, C, Mike Emo and Cedric Humes, or D, Brian Randall and Jeff King? I'm going to go with D, Brian and Jeff D? King. All right. Okay. Mike? 2004. Yeah, he was there. Uh, B, Randall. Mike gone. Yeah, that was your senior year, Brian. That was your senior year, right? In 2003 and 2004, Jeff King yeah, and Mike Emo, yeah, David Clowney. I stand by that. Yes, I stand by that. Okay. D. D. Brian you're Randall going with D. He's saying yeah. with confidence. So who is it? B. Brian Randall. Brian Randall. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mike? Yeah. Brian Randall. Brian Randall. Yeah. 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 But um, you were there on the team. What um, y'all upset Duke? If I'm correct, right? Nah, missed oh, that. Oh, y'all, y'all, okay. You Jeff King was that. on that team though. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think Jeff he was. King yeah. was. Yeah. I missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was that. it playing both sports? I was kind of, yeah. How was it? Bima let you do yeah. that. <laughs> be my, be oh, y'all want the stories untold? Yes, we want. We want the inside. We want the inside. Here's the inside scoop in a nutshell: how the basketball came about. O three, we talked about that season. Yeah. After the inside.com bowl, I go home for probably about three or four days. I get a call from Brian Matthews. Brian, Matthews. shout out Brian Matthews, hokey great in basketball. Yeah, um, he kissed me up. He's like, B. He's like, I talked to Coach Greenberg. Shout out to Coach Greenberg. Awesome coach, man. Awesome coach. No doubt. He was like, Coach said, if you know you want to come out and play, you can, you know what I'm saying? You can come out and play. I'm like, hey. I'm thinking in my head, I just got out of football. Like, I, I'm thinking about the season. I'm thinking about, yo, I'm, I'm already just dropping right. what just happened, eight right. and five. I'm like, man, I talked to my dad. I'm like, dad, I, I don't know. I don't know what I, what I should do. Now, granted, I, I, I haven't played. I'm, I'm going to play two years. You know, no basketball. You know what I'm saying? Right. Other than McComas. You know what I'm saying? Wrecking it up. Yeah, so, yeah. Long story short, the thing was, B was like, you could come out here. He's like, but the kicker is, we need you to come out here within the next couple of days. <laughs> Killed your whole break. Bro, cancel the break. Like, cancel the offseason. Cancel that. So I was like, B, I was like, dang. I'm thinking in my head, like, man, but I might not get this opportunity again. I'm thinking in my right. head, this is a, a last. So... 
when I told him I was going to play, I did that before I talked to anybody. Wow. You were very bold. Oh, you were real bold. You were Super very bold. bold. <laughs> so Beans found out. Can't cause... let it pass you by. <laughs> can't let that opportunity pass you by. You made hey, listen. I... I was in I was in limbo. It's I was in limbo from the season before, not knowing yeah. what was going to happen the next year. Right. I didn't right. know I, if, I, if, I if my I didn't know if my so number was so up. He, I didn't know if like, I'm coming as dreams. a backup. Yeah. Hoop so I'm dreams. like, listen. I said, you know what, B, I'm coming. Three days later, I'm in the whip up to Blacksburg to start practice. In my head, I'm like, those Beamer and them are just going to have to accept it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Listen, I'm listen. I'm, t- I'm gonna give you the so, truth. So truth. Yeah, so get, I want I want all the way to the story when Coach Baby called you and y'all had that conversation. <laughs> Look, it's honestly I don't even remember. I don't remember the situation where it turned into, you know, me sitting down and being like, you know, Coach Beam, are you gonna let me play? I don't remember none of that. All I remember is saying in my mind is that I'm playing basketball, and it wasn't on some get back at Coach Beamer. It wasn't like yeah, yeah. Go get back at him. I didn't want to hear no. I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to give nobody the opportunity <laughs> to be like, "No, you're not playing." This not. I got you. Listen, it was really a. It was a. It was, yo, the Did air the was spring? so thin from the previous season. Like it really, you. like the ship was like, it was tight. Like nobody really right. knew what to do. <laughs> Seriously, like it's, nobody knew exactly great, what was going to happen. This is a great story. It, yeah. Yes, nobody knew what was going to happen. So, I just. Kind of took it upon myself. Hoop dreams. Hoop, hoop dreams. Bro, hoop dreams. I took advantage of the opportunity. I took right. advantage of the opportunity. <laughs> best decision I ever made. Best decision I ever made. Hands down, one of the best times I've ever had in college in my life, period. Basketball in college, That's amazing. Bro, it was just so different. Like, I mean, as far as That's like amazing, from the, the schedule of like uh, football, you know what I'm saying? Like it was just, bro, play, you're playing games told. all the time. You're traveling. Hey, we got the end on that. I love you're it. In the, I love in the it. restaurant. So, we ordered amazing. food off the menu. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, it was real, bro. Like, you earned that right. That was going bro. into your senior year, too. That yeah, was going, going into, into my senior, senior year. I missed so. winter workouts. Like, I missed winter workouts that year because of basketball. Oh, you, oh, you know they, they, you know, yeah, you know so they was mad at that. I didn't get an orange shirt. I didn't get an orange shirt my senior year. You didn't get the orange. You lost your super iron. I hope I lost my listen. All your I ain't gonna lie. Super iron now. <laughs> hey, I still had the super iron, baby. Hey, I, I still yeah, been throwing yeah, up. Man, yeah, no I know. No I know, man. I know, <laughs> I know Gentry was tripping. I hey, mean. He wasn't too I, happy, but, but I think he was happy for me. He wasn't too happy that I was missing because we all know that those winter works are bonded. You know what I'm saying? You're bonding with the right, team. Right. You're getting up 6 a.m. the early morning. 6 a.m. So oh, man. Yeah, so it was kind of weird. So we think, you know, it's going to my senior year. If I am the starting quarterback, I'm not even there with the squad. No, I'm off in basketball. So, it, bro, it was different. But we see hey. how it turned out. I, mean, I was just about to say, hey, look, man. Hey, we see it was a magical out. season. That- Cuz said it was a magical season. Nah, I mean, it was. I mean, no, I mean, I, I, you know, B. Randall, man, um, one of my favorite players of all time. I mean, and I got a lot. That guys I played with, guys That's before true. me, um, after me. I mean, he's my guy, man. I didn't know that whole story. I thought, B, you know, because, you know, you talking about Beamer, man. He know, he know when you miss class. You know, he got hey. Bruce. He got Bruce and Berlin spying on you. You Listen, know what I'm saying? Everything. <laughs> everything. Like, it could have been. Look, it could have been a situation where the coach went to him first. But he, I wasn't go, I wasn't gonna be the one running the coach beam because I didn't want to hear no. You know what right. I'm saying? So maybe coach they talked to, you know, they had made it did their thing. But me personally, I think I you know, I think it's fair to say you earned Coach Beamer's respect <laughs> by all that working out the way it did. <laughs> hey, respect hey, the respect to Coach Beams, man. Hokey right, legend, man. man. Right. Yeah, man. yeah. No, coach it's, Beams, it's, man. no. It's, yeah. When smart men get together, smart men get together, man, they understand what the core values and principles are and what the What's at the finish line? And I think y'all both understood that. That was hey, good. hey, one quick story for y'all, real quick though, too, real quick. And I, no Ooh, I gotta come back to you. You my man, like Ook's my man. Like it. Yeah, people don't really understand is. that. People don't understand that I really didn't have a relationship with Mike while I was at Tech. Mm-hmm. On my visit, I saw Mike. Cool, but Mike wasn't my host. Vinny Burns was my host on my on my visit. You Nobody was even at campus. Nobody was there. Mm. I didn't actually really meet Mike until I got to Atlanta. 
that's when we formed our yeah. relationship. You know what I'm saying? Mike took me on this wing. Yeah. Shout out to Mike. Here's the story. When I was when I got my call to go where I was going to go undrafted, I got a call from Tampa Bay. I got a call from the Arizona Cardinals and I got a call from Atlanta. So this all happened. As soon as the draft's over, they calling me, da, 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 da. I get on the phone. I'm talking. Uh, I can't remember who exactly I was talking to. It might have been. Uh, it Rich was, McKay. Uh, MK. Yeah. MK. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Rich McKay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so no, 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 no. I'm talking to uh, QB coach. Who's the QB coach? Uh, Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson. So yeah. I, I'm talking to a couple of guys. Well, anyway, Mike Johnson gets on the phone and they're like, hold on. Before we do sign you, I need to holler at Mike to make sure everything is cool with us signing you. Yeah. Listen, and you know what? I, 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 I go down the behind those doors. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Listen, I'm like, hey, well, if, if he mad at me, like if he, you know what I'm saying? Like if he got a grudge <laughs> against me, yo, I, they ain't gonna sign me. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they made that yeah. known. It was like, listen, we first before we signed you though, we gotta we gotta talk to Mike to make sure that's good. Cool. And I don't know if they talked to him or not, but I do remember that vividly because I was thinking in my head, like, hey, he got he got juice. Like they're gonna yeah. ask him. Cause they don't want me coming in, or there'll be no other option to play some juice. situation that's that. Yeah, I'm like, Boy, damn, I'm just trying to play. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no, I ain't got no beef with Mike. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going. I'm just trying to get in the league. I'm trying to get my foot in the door. They trying to stop my dreams. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. But no, nah. stop your dream. Look, you know, I t- come on. And look, he did, man. man. Shout out, man. Hey, Oop, Oop was there for me, bro. I was hey, so hey, impressed hey, with Oop hey, when I got to Atlanta. We had, go hey, we had too much West fun. Coast. I said, bro, that's Spanish. I said they speak in Spanish in the playbook. <laughs> I said, Ooh, how 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 did you how how are you spitting out the play so fast? How are they able to say two words? You spitting out the whole play. I that's even, crazy. It, I'm getting a huddle. I'm like, man, green right, west, you left, H two, Molly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They they telling him, look, the white they in the huddle calling him. They, I'm looking on the sideline like this. All right, Mike, we got green right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm feeling right, it. Right. Like, what's the rest of the play? Green right, Fox, two, right, two, right, two, 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 Like a drive, three, two, down. I'm like, yo, this is bro. Because he asked me one night, he was just, like, how do you call the plays like that? I'm like, I was mind blown. Bro, I hey. really was mind blown. Shout like, out bro, to Greg like, Knapp. A lot of practice. A lot of practice. Shout out to Greg Knapp. Rest in peace, Coach Knapp, man. Greg He's Knapp, one of man. the greatest teachers that I've ever had. As far as detail and how to teach a system and from from you to... Matt Schaub, to any guy who came behind me, I was able to teach it the way he taught me, and I thought that was special. So, yeah, that was cool. man, we had we had such a good time. Um, Brian didn't make the team that year. He went on and played elsewhere a bunch of other years in different places, but we still got a relationship to this day, man. It's like no other true brotherhood, and I appreciate yeah. that, man. And we definitely yeah. appreciate you coming on and joining. Oh, absolutely, us. man. Hey, yes, and you mentioned shout-outs. This is the last segment we have for the show before we close out, man. We want to end it with Hokie shout outs, man. Um, you can shout out, Brian, um, any Hokie you want, current player, a coach, a retired player, um, anybody, as long as they are Hokie. So I'll go first, man. I was going to go with Brun Mice. We talked about him a lot. I was happy for your old teammate, you know, Coach Jay Ham, Justin Hamilton. But I'm going to go in a different lane. I want to I want to shout out Hokie Nation and everybody affiliated with Virginia Tech, man. Like, I felt like, this past weekend, Hokie Nation showed out with the all orange, the fans. You had that one ugly incident with some UNC fan, but that happens everywhere. Overall, man, like I felt like we kicked off the season and the fans really helped us bring that game home. And I feel like this could be something special if Tech can build on it because our fan base, when we were there, before we got there, every year, Hokie Nation has shined. And I feel like, man, they deserve a shout out, man. They, I mean, even with this show, this new pod, me and Mike came and people are just supporting us. And there's a lot of podcasts out there. I've been on a lot of them. Shout out to all the other, my guy, Don V, Sons of Saturday, a lot of them out there, but we getting that same love, man. So I'm going to shout out Hokie Nation, man. Um, Mike, who are you going to shout out, man? Uh, I'm going to shout out, I'm going to shout out VV3. I got to shout out the quarterback in week one because you know, I always got my eyes on what the quarterback is doing, and I'm watching everything that goes on uh, from his mannerisms to the way he's looking in his helmet. And the kid looked like he was just having fun. And, uh, you know, to know that, you know, he was able to keep it tight, didn't turn the ball over. I know that's always cliche, but for him to hang in there for four quarters against one of the top teams in the country, 
I think it says a lot about that young man. So shout out to BB3. And I'm not always going to be quarterback biased. I just think that set the tone <laughs> for the weekend. Nah, that's a great shout out, man. I mean, he yeah. he was great, man. I love I love the way he played. Yeah, he right, um, D. Randall, who you got, man? All right, man. My shout out, man. Like both, I mean, Hokey Nation, definitely the way, like you said, BB3 did his thing for sure. But man, I'm gonna go with my man's. I came into school with one of the original four that we came into school early, summer session early. My first roommate in Cochran. Jay Ham, shout out to Jay <laughs> Ham, man. Yes, Justin man. Hamilton, Jay Ham, yes, freshman roommate, man. my freshman Word. roommate, man. I'm so excited for him, man. I I know his work ethic, man. I know his his intensity. You know what I'm saying? And the defense did their thing, man. Shout yes, they the did. Defense. Yes, they shout did. Shout out to the defense. Yeah. Oh, yes, they shout did. Shout out to the D. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, the man, defense everybody. did their thing, bro. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. You know, yes. this year too. So you know, now his feet his, his feet are wet. Now he he's in the mix, you know what I'm saying? So he's right there in it, man. So we we going to shout out, man, Jay Ham. Hey, man. baby. Hey, hey. 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 No, man. Shout this out is to Jay Ham. Nah, I'm <laughs> proud of him, man. And I, I've I've talked to him a few times, man. I did the Virginia Tech moderator thing for the alumni. And I've talked to him, even him one-on-one. And he he's poised for a great run. He replaced a legend, but he's already taken a lot of foot uh great did, step bro. forward. And he on did. top of it, he finally had an offseason with this guys. And wow, and I yep. love I love what yep. I saw on defense. I'm an offensive guy, but I know a great defensive scheme when I see one. Yes. So, yep. you know, it's again, it's again, it's, hey, hey, be Randall, <laughs> real quick before we wrap up. How can um people keep up with you? What do you got going on and what, real quick, where, where can they keep up with you? What do you got going on? Where, where can they follow you? Hey, listen, so you know, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, Instagram 3 underscore uh B underscore Rand, yeah. I believe mm -hmm. it is. I'm on Facebook. Listen, type my name in. You're going to find me. Check out my family. We got a YouTube page going on now, the Randalls of Pancakes that. Saturday. So y'all can us on YouTube. Hey, it's just, listen, our life, we got, I got three kids now, man. I'm loving it. Um, I'm staying busy. I'm working at the shipyard, uh, doing production control. Shout out to my RSR family. You know, things are good, man. I'm blessed, man. God has been really good to me and my family and, uh, you know, I'm I'm just excited about life, man. I'm the same hope you always was, you know what I'm saying, to the heart. And, um, you know, if y'all looking to find me, man, I'm, I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all about, you know, being out here for, for people, you know what I'm saying, spreading the love. And um, it's be random, and an amazing And an amazing motivational speaker. <laughs> Book them. Hey, boy, next time I see you, I'm going to get you on that golf course. <laughs> You got me the last time, but I'm going to get you when I see you. I'm going to get you. Hey, hold on. Say it again. I got, who, who won last? Who you won, won last? last? You won last. <laughs> you won last. But, but just know I'm working on my game. I told you I was hitting the ranks. I'm going to start hey, working on my game. I'm going to start hitting Don't the let Mike fool y'all, though. Listen, Mike started playing golf when I got to Atlanta. I was beating him up, blah, blah, blah. He couldn't hang, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what this man did. But, <laughs> but I don't know what this man did within a couple years. This man is a totally different guy. Don't let him fool y'all with the new guy. He's not no new golfer no more. <laughs> take your money. This man is a I'll real golfer. Money. He's and a I real just golfer got some now. new equipment, and I just got some new equipment. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Well, look, hey, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you, B. Randall, for jumping on, man. On behalf Thanks, of my co-host, Mike, you, we appreciate you, you man. And we appreciate you, Hokie Nation. Kick off Saturday, 2 o'clock, Middle Tennessee, in Lane Stadium. And like we say every week, Hokie Nation, we love you. Go Hokies. Go Hokies. Nah. Hokie Nation, we love you.